speak through my words if they are worthy and work through our deeds when they are worthy. And when they are not, speak and work in spite of them. Amen. Amen. So, guess what? It's a brand new church season. Guess what season it is? It's on the front of your bulletin. February. February. Thank you. <laughs> it's this liturgical season of February. It's the liturgical season of Lent. And because we're changing a season, you see the bulletin has been changed a bit in honor of, of seasonal change. And I thought I would show you what I'm actually supposed to wear whenever I celebrate the Eucharist with you all. I have on my liturgical purple, which is a, a sign both of royalty, but also of penitence. Um, so it's penitence, not that I'm a king. And I have on my alb, which is basically the Latin word for white. And it's my white, so people call it a robe, but it's called an alb. And then my cincture, which is the Episcopal word for rope. Okay, and so I think that's everything that I'm wearing liturgically. Of course, I have on my collar that you could be told about. And I think I will probably wear this all of Lent as part of my Lenten discipline. Um, so get ready. And you have your purple stole. Oh, and we yeah. do have on our purple stole. Um, my predecessor appears to have taken the stole that matches this chas. Oh, this is a chasuble. I call it a chassis. <laughs> and the soul that matches it, you always have a soul that matches it, appears to have gone to East Lansing, Michigan. Luckily, I have one of mine. Yeah. All right. So we are entering Lent. And you may have been told that Lent is, in our culture, you might know that it begins the day after Mardi Gras. It begins with Ash Wednesday. Some of you uh, came out and got ashes from me on the at the sample gates, or you got them from one of my colleagues. Um, had three Roman Catholics come and were going to receive from me, and then I told them I wasn't Roman Catholic, but my ashes were, and they thought, oh, I better not do it. And I thought, oh, <laughs> but plenty of other Romans took them, and I thought, okay, good. Yeah. And we had good conversations because a lot of them had not been at church in a while. And so it was nice to have that interaction with them. And somehow getting inside of the church building that day wasn't going to happen. And so they had a connection with me that I thought was pretty cool. Not because of me, but just, and I thought that was awesome. So I do that every year. Um, but this is a season that people um, prepare ourselves, both in the liturgy, the liturgy's changed, um, but also personally, spiritually, maybe behaviorally uh, for the coming of, um, well, for the resurrection, the miraculous resurrection of Jesus, God uh, from the dead. So God, the creator, resurrects God, the human, from the dead after he has been crucified. Unfortunately, before we get to that wonderful resurrection for which we're preparing, we also have to be prepared for the fact that there's Holy Week. And that involves a lot of not so pretty stuff like the arrest, the arrest of Jesus, the sham trial, the betrayal, some call it, of Judas, um, the, the denial of Jesus by one of his strongest followers, Peter, whose praises we've been singing lately. Um, denies him three times. Um, then after the sham trial, Jesus is tortured and beaten and spit on and called names and, well, killed um, and buried, dead. He does not kind of die. He literally dies. Um, so we sort of prepare ourselves personally, internally for that. And one word that you may have heard associated with um, the penitential season of Lent, where you're thinking penitentially, is the word that comes from the same, same root, is repent. And unfortunately, for the last either 100 or 2,000 years, the word repent has been misused, and it has had a lot of baggage added to it that makes it not helpful or feel healthy or useful for holiness. And so Although I think that the word repent could stand to be redeemed from some of these connotations around it, one of the things I've learned to do is to take some other R E words in the English language. And hopefully, in our minds, mentally, I've been doing this for about, well, I've been about 11 years now because that's how long I've been a priest. And I try to incorporate some of these words into my understanding of how I'm preparing myself internally and behaviorally for. Um, the coming not only of the death, but the wonderful resurrection of Christ, using the season of Lent to do that. So I want to help us reframe the word repent 
by adding to the mix some other R E words. Um, and you don't have to write these down. Um, I'll give you the list later. And I have a few of them here. Um, and I hope that whichever one or two or 10 speak to you most, you can use those to reflect over the season of Lent. And we can talk more about it, um, your Lenten discipline over the meal. Um, but I'll share them with you now. Refresh. Relax. Rest. Replenish. Revive. Read, or as students, refuse to read. Rebel. Respirate. Rehabilitate. Refuse. Refuse. Believe it or not, rejoice. Restore. Rethink. Rewind, unwind, reserve, recede, rain in, or take the reins, revolution. Reduce, reduce, repurpose, recycle, revamp, receive, revel. Realize, reorient, reap, redo, gracious God, may we find in the language of our lives, words and behaviors that make us closer to you during this holy and healthy, even happy season of Lent. May we reclaim the word repent in a way that uplifts and renews in your name. Amen.